NC State's high-powered offense in 2023, brought to you by offensive coordinator Robert and I. You are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. up Wolfpack Nation welcome back to another episode of Locked on Wolfpack free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube part of the Locked on Podcast Network your team every day as always I'm Grayson Boone joining me is Kenton Gibbs and real quick before we get into this here with Robert and I uh, a couple administrative things that I've mixed myself up on I'm so focused on getting to August 31st that I don't even know what day in August it currently is this is of course involving Jonathan Paler and Joshua Alexander Felton. What I told you was their commitment dates were on August 4th. That is still correct. But also what I told you was that's on Saturday. No, it is not. If you might look at a calendar today, maybe your phone, maybe your Apple Watch, you might see that today, Friday, is August 4th. And what does that mean? NC State might be getting two massive commitments here by the end of the day today. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. I know I mentioned it yesterday. Check out Jonathan Paler's live stream of his commitment. It will be will be on uh, 247 Sports. I'm sure Corey Smith and Pac Pride will be all over it. Be sure to check that out as we're very much hoping to get a big-time uh, wide receiver recruit uh, into the red and white. But Kenton, on this Friday here, I'm going to kind of turn this into a movie day, if you will. A lot of us remember in both elementary school, maybe middle school, if you were lucky enough, maybe even high school, sometimes on Friday you might get a little bit of a movie day. And what that means is the teacher would wheel in a movie and you'd enjoy that, but you'd have to usually have some kind of discussion afterward. We're going to do a little bit at, a little bit of that today. I have three different clips uh, for all of you, and we're going to have a discussion afterward, just like, uh, just like my old teachers used to do. So this first one here is coming from uh, offensive coordinator. I keep wanting to call him head coach. Maybe someday. Offensive coordinator Robert and I talking about the offense uh, on day two of fall camp. Let me just bring this up real fast. All right, here we go. Be prepared to discuss. You have a big wide receiver room. Can you just talk about the, the depth you have a wide receiver? Uh, why don't you? Yes, a lot of depth, a lot of opportunity. And, uh, boy, we got some nice-looking guys, and they are fast. So, uh, you know, kind of leading the charge there has been Keon Hussein, and rightly so. Uh, he led the summer workouts, and, uh, boy, he's really uh, – it's, it's yeah, really good to see his leadership because if the right guys are leading, that is going to be a great group. How much value has there been in having Brennan, who played under you before, to maybe help guys figure things out offensively? Because of the familiarity with the system. Uh, well, I think anywhere I've been, if your quarterback uh, earns trust and confidence in the weight room and in the training uh, aspect, uh, strength and conditioning world, uh, that means a lot to the team. You're not just playing quarterback. You're leading the team. And, uh, you know, I do think our guys working out in, in the uh, fall, the winter, and the summer uh, with him have now – earned you know i do believe brendan has earned their respect and how he says brendan has earned their respect kenton that out of this minute clip here what are your biggest takeaways from robert and i so far first thing first keon the same being the leader of the group that is you know i talked about before um hearing out coming out of, of spring ball and whatnot they didn't know who was going to be uh, the the guys in terms of the receiving room. So hearing Keon Lesane has established himself as the leader is what I love to hear. That's absolutely what I love to hear because yes, you love to have that that ambiguity of there's so much talent, and so much competition. There's competition at every spot, but what you love even more than that is a definitive, decisive leader and a alpha of the pack per se to say, hey, this is the guy. 
if you model your preparation after him, you may not be able to model your game after him. You may be long and lanky, a long strider, not necessarily the game that Keon the same plays. You may be great with the ball in your hands after getting it. Again, not maybe not necessarily uh, the the same exact same game as Keon the same, but you can be a guy who follows his leadership in terms of work ethic and preparation and things along those lines. And also, we're at, we're at fall camp. The pads are coming on. We're talking production now. We're not just talking all of the other things. We're talking hand in the dirt. We're talking balls in the air, football. That's what we're talking right now. And so to hear that he is uh, leading the group there, that's that's my biggest takeaway. Yeah, in terms of production, I believe Keon is the highest returning uh, receiver of this yes, he is. young he and is. inexperienced group here. So, yeah, that is exactly the guy you hope to be leading this bunch uh, into this fall. You know, you have a lot of unproven talent in your Julian Grays and your yep. KC Conceptions and your, uh, you know, Anthony Smith even. He's a little bit inexperienced because he's been dealing with some injury. Yeah, Haven't gotten sure. quite as much as we'd like out of him. And then, of course, you had a, a little bit of a, a flash of a Terrell Timmons last year, certainly expecting a lot more from him this year. But, yeah, it's it's super important to have a guy leading the charge here, I guess leading the pack, did um uh, with Keon Lassane. But yeah, you know, certainly impressed um, that he took that jump as a leader here because uh, we desperately need one in this wide receiving room this year. So then uh, I have one more short clip from Coach and I here. Let me play this real fast. And talked about how creative both yours and Coach Gibson's schemes are. Just how helpful is it to have someone like Coach Gibson to work with and bounce ideas off? Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? It's like every day is football school because our defense is hard and they're tough and they play together and they're very smart and they're well coached. So you put all those things every day on your offensive team. Yeah, you're going to produce a really, you have an opportunity to produce a really uh, trial tested offense. And, and spring was that way in the first two days were that way and the whole fall camp will be that way. Uh, so, yeah, a great opportunity. For us to grow an offense. Iron sharpens iron, they say. And it sounds like that is exactly what we're getting at camp thus far. Yeah. I mean, we do talk a lot about this defense, and Tony Gibson has, you know, created such a monster here in such a short amount of time with this 335. Yeah, you know, as as young and I guess still inexperienced as this offense may be, and they're still putting all these pieces together to face such a tough defense feels like, yeah, they will be battle tested by the time the season rolls around. It feels like that's exactly the type of things you want them to go through. You almost in a, in a sense, you want them to struggle in fall camp because this is how they're going to learn the quickest uh, trial by fire, I guess, if you will. So, you know, it's, it's so cool to have two highly regarded coordinators on both sides Absolutely. of the ball, because Absolutely. I'm not sure that's really something we can, uh, you know, plant our flag that we've had a whole lot of NC State at NC State, you know, these past maybe even a decade. But both of these offense or offense and defensive coordinators are very highly regarded in their own right. And it the final product, if if both sides are, are running at full speed here, we could become even more dangerous than we thought when the season rolls around. This defense that they're facing in practice is at worst – at absolute worst, and I mean this with every bit of my heart, at absolute worst, the third best defense they'll face this year. And that's yep. me being very aggressive about how good some of the defenses that they'll face uh, will be and, and you know, underestimating the pack, being as generous as I can to everybody else. Third best. Third. Could be the best. And so with that in mind, you know, you talk about iron sharpening iron and whatnot. Well, what do you what do you do when you go into a game and their defense just feels slower, feels less connected? Their defensive backs are a lot easier to complete passes against than uh, what you're looking at with with ours. This you're absolutely right. I love seeing guys who are competing, who are showing up, who are ready to not just uh, not just, you know, not just a situation where it's like, oh, we're, we're talking about. Yeah, it's. It's it's a good against good, ones versus ones and all that. No, no, no. You're talking a legitimate, one of the best defenses in the nation, making your offense better day by day. And if the offense can catch up and meet them there, 
you have something special in your hands. Yeah, and it, it's I'm starting to expect something special. I gotta even reel myself back a little bit. I mean, it's only two days here, but it's 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 been almost a clinic of hearing everything you want to be hearing uh, this early into fall camp. So certainly sounds like things are moving along uh, as predicted, maybe even ahead of schedule at some points, but things are going well. Very happy to hear that. Our sponsor for today's show, or at least one of our sponsors for today's show, is LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have best access to the best qualified candidates available, and that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. They use simple tools like screening questions to make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you would like to hire or interview and then hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So what you need to do is go over to linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free today. Terms and conditions do apply. All right, class, uh, consider the second period. I have another clipping I can show to you to entertain the folks. This one, this one might be, may be getting a little bit more buzz than uh, Coach and I. This one's coming from one of our quarterbacks. Uh, if it's if it's the one you you know maybe been more interested to hear from, it is. It is MJ Morris. He spoke to the media on Thursday afternoon, and I couldn't get enough of what he had to say. Here, take a listen. We're having some technical difficulties here, folks. Don't worry, Grayson will be right back to play that video of MJ Morris. Long story short, it is him reaffirming his commitment to the pack and uh, what he wants to do here with NC State before he gets out of here. Uh, Grayson seems to be back in the building, so we've we've got Grayson back. We've got him back. He'll be he'll be speaking here in any second. But yeah, I don't know. We're, I don't know what I just did. I apologize for that. Oh, don't worry about it. You know, sometimes we all get in the kitchen and cook up something terrible. You know what I mean? We just we throw it away, get some Wendy's, and keep it pushing, right? So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we're we're gonna play the video now of MJ Morris. Don't worry, Grayson. I've been uh, I've been letting the people know what the video was about, and uh, let's let the clip roll. Here we go. Let's try that again. Sorry about that, folks. In high school, you think back of the, the roller coaster of the last fifteen months and the ups and downs and the emotions. What, what do you kind of learn and how, I guess, how have you matured? Uh, I was matured of course, of course, I'm becoming a man. Of course, I was in high school. I had to grow up quick. Uh, just put my faith in God and knowing that it's a long process. You know, I just got to take each day one by one. And then, of course, it's just all going to come into play. That's as long as I be patient. Did you ever think about entering the transfer portal or was that never in your mind at all? I mean, obviously, bringing in Brandon, you knew with the new coach, that kind of thing. Uh, it was never in the top of my head, but of course, I like to compete. But at the end of the day, I chose, I committed here for a reason. It's a place I want to be for the next three to four years of my life. Hmm. At the end of the day, when I committed here, I said I want my name to be up on that stadium one day. So like that that thought was never even in my mind in the first place. You mentioned patience. How hard is it to be patient? Uh, of course, it's tough that sometimes everybody wants to, you know, do their thing, get their time to shine. But my parents taught me well how to stay patient, you know, that everything's going to come into play at the right time. Why don't you just trust God, just trust in his plan? Do you kind of sometimes daydream about what the future might hold or what receivers you might throw to or Every weapons day. you have around you? <laughs> Every day I'm just looking, I'm like, yeah, this play is going to work in this game all the time. Just looking at the NFL, too, I can see myself on every single team making NFL goals, <laughs> playing the Super Bowl, of course. That's all I dream about every day. Not that you like crowd there last year, but how much more crowd there are you now after actually mm-hmm. playing college football and having success? Yeah, I actually feel a lot, of, a lot more confident. Of course, I know how – College players move, they move, they move a lot quicker than high school people. So everything speeds up a half a second quicker. So knowing that, I'm able to speed my game up a half a second quicker. So if I know I'm passing the defense, I know that I can be calm and play my game how I want to play. When was the last time you watched the Wake Forest game? Say what? When was the last time you watched the Wake Forest win? Probably 
I thought three weeks ago. Actually, I really just like watching because that's what I do. I watch film on my old games to see how I can improve stuff I did wrong. But uh, even just I turned on the whole game when it was like ten o'clock and I just turned on the whole game, just watched it, just watching how stuff folded. So. Confident, committed. What more could you want in the quarterback of the future here at NC State? You forgot the third seat, charismatic. The camera loves the man. The camera loves the man. He is one of those guys that – he's one of those guys. He has that it factor that you talk about with quarterbacks or or really with anybody that there's just something about. There's a a magnetism to him. And, um, you know, me personally, I hate quarterbacks. Everybody knows this about me. There's no (laughs) – no secret or surprise there, but the more of that quarterbacks have generally, the less I like them. And that MJ kid, I look at him all the time and think to myself, everybody's going to love you so much, won't they? You'll just be the perfect quarterback for the pack. Your name's going to go up on that stadium one day. I have learned to uh, hate all quarterbacks except the ones that tried out there in the red and white. So, you know, uh, MJ, you know, you're, you're a friend of this pod. You're, you're good with us, you know, all that good stuff, but very seriously, he, he is saying all the right things. It is sounding, um, you know, like you said, committed, locked in. He's going to be here. And again, we saw last year, you're never more than about four plays away from seeing the four string guy. So the backup, you're never more than one play away, which knock on wood. We hope that, you know, it doesn't come to that. And we hope that, you know, MJ could potentially get a red shirt year or whatever the case may be here. But it is what it is. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's great to have a, a backup that's played, uh, that has had success, that has done some good things, that has shown us he's got a cannon for an arm. He can use his legs. He can do a little bit of it all. And the only thing with him is just getting him reps, getting him adjusted to the speed of things, and also getting the timing down. Because I think that that's the biggest thing for young quarterbacks is the of the game. You know, he talked about how everything speeds up. Well, does that speeding up affect you mentally to where you lose your – because you go through and rep these plays, rep these route concepts a thousand times in practice. When you go into the game, who's going to be where and when? But does it speed you up? Does the Do the bright light speed you up? Does hearing all the fans screaming speed you up? Does seeing the red light speed you up? Or do you stick to your timing – and do what you need to do. So that's that's going to be the biggest question for him going forward in the future. But he's saying everything I want to hear out of him uh, in terms of talking to the media today. Yeah, it, it certainly right. feels like, you know, when, when his time does come, whenever that is, whether it's this year or next, it feels like he's already been able to grasp that portion where the game will come to him at a slower rate because of he, he's, his poise is unbelievable. And I, you know, something that really stuck with me when he was kind of thrust into the limelight with that Virginia tech comeback win last year, they interviewed him after the game. And even then just very calm, couldn't give enough credit to his teammates and how excited he was to step up for the team. It was the team, the team, the team. And it it just feels like that, that confidence and that patience. And yeah, you talk about his charisma. It's only blossomed here in what, I mean, a little, a little bit under a year. And I'm just so impressed with how eloquent he gets his answers, you know, kind of painting the exact picture he wants to be painting. He really doesn't leave anything up for interpretation. He he makes it very clear. Listen, I'm, I'm here. I want to be here. This is going to be my team. It's hard to wait, but I'm trusting the process. Yeah. I mean, if, as if, like I said, as if you needed any other reason to love this kid even more than perhaps a lot of us already do, it just, you, you get over the moon excited with the the character he's going to bring to the quarterback position here in such a short amount of time. Yep. The wizard of Raleigh, right? That's, that's what we're <laughs> looking at here. The young man's got charisma to spare. Uh, he's got game to spare. You know, we're, we're looking forward to seeing great things uh, from MJ and all that good stuff. Again, we're hoping whoever is playing quarterback is Brennan right now. We hope that Brennan stays the quarterback because if he does, that means everything's going great. He's healthy. He's balling out, playing good and all that. But if that isn't the case, if there is another plan, then, you know, hey, MJ, go ahead and do your thing, brother. Get, get to cooking up. But at worst, we're expecting him to be, you know, getting in there with the pots and pans uh, next season next season as his year and beyond that. So right. it'll it's, be great to see. 
it, it's the security blanket aspect that feels so good about this. The confidence yeah. that we are able to instill in what we do believe to be a second stringer this year. But again, like a lot of what we talked about over the summer is sure. They named Brennan Armstrong QB one. We do feel like that is the correct decision, but Dave Dorn's comments over the summer, it kind of leads you to believe that, yeah, it's kind of one, a one B because they're both so talented and they're both ready to step up for this team. So yeah, being able to have this confidence in MJ behind Brennan, it just, it feels so good as an NC state football fan, because again, you just, it feels like it's not really something we've experienced a whole lot of probably in the last decade or so. So yeah, I mean, the, it, it, it feels like just the world could be in MJ's hands here in, you know, X amount of months. He, he has that talent. He has that poise. He has that character. And I think everything he's working for, it's going to, it's going to blossom for him. He's going to be able to enjoy the fruits of his labor. So, I mean, if, if we look at the past few years, right, we look at, um, you know, Devin Leary and, and uh, the sit backup situation behind him last year. Were we was anybody sold on Jack Chambers coming into the season? Respectfully, no. Sorry, Jack. But that being said, you know, MJ Morris was unproven freshman in. It, you didn't know anything about him. The year before that, Devin stayed healthy. Great. Good to see. Was anybody sold on Bailey Hockman? Was anybody? I, I wanted to be. I'll be completely honest. Hand up. I were wanted you, to be sold. Were you sold on him? Were no. you sold? <laughs> After were the you fact, sold? no. I, I can say before the fact, I was not sold on on either one of those guys. But either one, of Bailey and Devin, I wasn't sold on either one to say, like, I if you told me Martians have the laser beam pointed at Earth, do you? We do have aliens now, so that's a nice thing. But anyway, Martians have the, the death beam pointed at Earth, right? Do you believe that either one of these quarterbacks would be successful? I wouldn't have said that one I had super confidence in, let alone both let alone both. But with this current group of quarterbacks that we have, I can say with both, I can say I'm confident in Brendan Armstrong. I'm also confident in MJ Morris. I'm confident in both. I'm not going to go against the coach's decision because I'm not in that meeting room every day. I'm not in practice every day. I'm not seeing every rep taken from a physical or mental standpoint. I'm not seeing that, but I feel comfortable with either one of these guys. And that's something that Historically, we haven't been able to say here in terms of backup starter situations um, at NC State. So, like you said, that security blanket aspect is like getting your sheets out the dryer before you go to bed. It's, it, it keeps you warm and snug when you when you get in bed. Helps you go to sleep a little bit faster and a, a little bit heavier. The cover feels a little bit heavier after you get out the dryer. And it helps you sleep a little better. Absolutely, and yeah, I mean that that security can go certainly a long way, especially after what we endured last year having to mow through four different quarterbacks just to get to the end of the year. So shout out, to, uh, shout out to NC state legend, little Ben Finley. We hardly legend forever. You. We'll never forget you little Ben Finley. We'll never forget you brother. Now uh, we actually have another live read, another sponsor for today's show. That's eBay motors for a championship team. It's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head over to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to My Garage and look for the green check to know if the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confident is the na- confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. With over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. And after all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. All right. To cap this off, I have yet another clip. I'm going to try and not abandon the stream this time. Still don't know how that happened, but well, this we are one. Right. We are right. We, we got through it. You know what I mean? We got through this it. This one is coming from our new offensive line coach in Garrett 2J. You want to talk about energy, Coach 2J is bringing it. That's first day. The, the, the last first day. Appreciate it, Coach. Love you more. Good? All right, go over there and snap. All right, here we go. Hey, pro reps, NFL reps right now. NFL reps. Oh, 
Hey, energy, 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 energy. Energy! Hey, can't hear you! Can't hear you! Oh! Oh! Might be my favorite drill. All right, helmets on, chin straps on. Here we go. Ready? Ah! How many times did you front squat this summer? How many times did you back squat? How many times did you power clean, right? Use those tools in your shed to be an elite football player at NC State, right? That's why we're doing it. Everything you do with Thunder, we're going to bring it out here on the field. Here, left middle. Find the ball! Find the ball! Find the ball! Find the ball! Ready? God bless America. Ten push-ups. Someone count them off. Let's do it, homie. Ah, oh, One. Oh, oh. Be violent with your hands. All right, just a little bit of pressure on the hips. Here we go. Violent, violent, violent. Here's the deal. If this drops before my second clap, you owe me uh, push-ups. All right, here we go. Ready. Good. Good, good, good communication. Not sure what you said, but I felt the urgency. Whoa! Whoa! Woo! Physical, physical, physical. Nice. Good. That's it right there, AD. Strike! Like your life depends on it! Strike! Ready. There you go. I, I gotta I gotta next crew. Next crew. Oh, All right. I listen, I played one year of football. I hurt my knee at the very end of it, kind of spooked me out. So after that, I stuck to baseball. Mm-hmm. I have to imagine if I stuck with football, this is the exact kind of coach that would get the absolute best out of me. Bringing the energy, holding the players accountable, and in a lot of fashion, making it fun in practice. If that's exactly who's going to get the most out of a player, I feel like. Kenton, what do you got to say about this? I don't want coaches, especially in the trenches, that I feel like are sane, well-adjusted individuals. <laughs> and I mean that. I know Dang. people think I joke when I say that. No. I want men who I think there's something wrong with that guy. If football wasn't a sport, I don't know what he would be doing with his life. I don't know. And that's that's the type of guy that Coach 2J is. He's, he's showing it. The passion's there. The the love is there. The emotion is there. It is, you know, and I'll tell you this. You can tell when the coach is putting on the show. You can tell. You can, It's just like when players are mic'd up. Same thing. You can tell when it's like, that's not who you are on a, a, a Tuesday in week four. You're, you're doing this because you're mic'd up, brother. What's going on here? It, it genuinely feels like, and I could be wrong, but I don't believe I am. It genuinely feels like, that's who Coach 2J is. That It feels like he is that guy day in, day out. He just happened to have a mic on today. You could tell by how the players were reacting and responding. You know, nobody's like, oh, come on, Coach. Come on. Come on. This ain't you. You're, you're a quiet, cerebral guy. You read books and drink tea. That's not – that that wasn't the feeling we got at all there. So uh, I love coaches like that. I love coaches that bring the energy, bring the juice, bring the passion, bring the fire to where, again, I, I feel like, we talk about players being a coach on the field. Well, we say that for a reason because the coach is the leader. The, the leaders on the team set the tone and the ultimate leaders are the coaches. That's Those are the ultimate leaders. So having somebody that brings the type of energy, brings the type of juice, brings the type of excitement that even if you aren't feeling it that day, being around him is going to make you start feeling it. That's the type of coach I want to uh, be around. Absolutely. The sentiment I get around Coach 2J is that he is – like that day in and day out. He doesn't take a day off uh, of energy by any means. But yeah, you know, we, we've talked about it briefly in the past, but seeing him now in action and seeing the energy that he does bring to this team every day, you got to feel over the moon, uh, you know, ambitious about what he can accomplish here because we've, we, you know, we've had this quite distinguished list of offensive linemen guys that we've put into the NFL of recent. You bring in this coach who's coming in and he's putting rubber to the road. The world, I mean, the world seems like everything is possible for this new group here. You know, a Dylan McMahon chasing a new newer position for him. He, it feels like he's going to get all the confidence he could ever ask for out of a coach like Coach Two J here. So, you know, it's it's incredible to see 
you potentially such a, a large impact he's made in such a short amount of time joining us. I believe it was just this past December, January. He's ready. He's here. He's hitting the ground running. And I can't wait to see what this unit turns out to be uh, once the season rolls around. Absolutely. The offensive line, the big boys are always who win and lose you games. That's the reality. If you don't believe me, look at Boston College last year. A thousand yard rusher and Pat Garwell all of a sudden was averaging two yards per carry. Why? The offensive line was banged up. When your offensive line plays well, the entire team plays well. Why? Because what part of the game does the offensive line not touch? In terms of every passing play, be it the quick game, be it deep balls, be it uh, the play action game, whatever you want to look at, the offensive line has to hold up. In the running game, if you want to run inside, if you want to run outside, if you want to run trick plays, if you want to run gadget plays, the offensive line has to hold up. And so uh, improving this this group and, and, you know, having a situation where they are just as good, if not better, I would hope better than last year in many uh, aspects. That's that's something special. Absolutely. Let the big dogs eat, as we like to Let say on here. The, well, I'll tell you this much. The big dogs are supposed to eat, but they set the table. They're the table setters. They're, they're the, the help, per se, that come in and make sure that everybody's plates are nice and clean and the, the, the silver is real sterling. Uh, in order for everybody else to eat. So let them eat. But when they eat, everybody else's plate gets set as well. That's right. Uh, that's a perfect note to end on on this Friday. So thank you, class, for joining us on this Friday movie day. Uh, potentially maybe something we'll look into more so in the future. But as always, thank you so much for joining us. Drop a like. Drop us some comments. Mash that subscribe button. And uh, buckle up. We got a couple of commitments on the way on this Friday evening hopefully for some uh, some good news for NC State as we look to complete this 2024 class. But that'll do it for us here on Friday. Thank you, as always. Go Pack. Go Pack.